we've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We come. We come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. In all of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding, Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome from the time that you entered into the house of God. bless you once again. I'm Dr. Schaefer, the pastor of Interceding Christian Center's headquarters at 414 Thompson Avenue in the beautiful city of West Memphis. To God Almighty be the glory, great things that he has done. Let me first encourage you. We love the same God who kept you before is the same God that will keep you even more. Amen. Don't be concerned about all the different variants of the, the pandemic going around. Be cautious. Be cautious. But do not allow fear to dictate your life and how you live your life. Amen. Recently, Lord dropped aside in my spirit a sermon that came from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1, particularly looking at chapter uh, verses uh, 7 and 8. And it says, don't mock God. Don't be fooled by the things that are going on in this world. Don't allow yourself to be caught up in the fear factors. And don't allow yourself to be used of the enemy or allow others to speak detriment towards your faith. Do not mock God. Let's go into the sanctuary here with us. Said the Lord in a sermon that's entitled, Don't Mock God. Come on, let's go. The book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. The book of Galatians chapter 6. Begin at verse 1. The word of the Lord reads this. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Or if a man think of Self to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Right. For every man shall bear his own burden. Right. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Mm -hmm. Be not deceived. You need to hear this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Or he that soweth to his flesh, this is verse 8, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And verse 9 and 10, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10 ended, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me go back to verse uh, 7 and 8 and minister to you this morning. So verse 7 says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 8, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. I want to mention to you from a topic this morning. It's called, Do Not Mock God. Amen. Do Not Mock God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give you some historical references here. The man John Lennon, Lennon was a beetle. He was of the fantastic, the Fab Four, wherever they called him themselves during the time period. And once during an interview, John Lennon said to American Magazine, he said, you know, Christianity is going to end. It's going to end. It's going to disappear. And I don't have to argue that. I'm certain that John Lynn was wrong because Christianity is here and John Lynn is gone. He's gone. Hallelujah. Then also another man from the country of Brazil, who was the president of Brazil, matter of fact, 
And Secreto Nevis said this during his presidential campaign. He said that if he got 500,000 votes from his party, not even God would remove him from the presidency. He got the votes. He got to office. But the day after he was inaugurated into the office, he fell sick. He fell deadly sick. And he died of a dreaded disease the day after he was inaugurated. Or how about one of his fellow citizens named Kazusa? Kazusa was a man who thought that he was a woman. He was a Brazilian composer. He was a singer and he was a poet. And one day while doing a show in Rio de Janeiro, which is the capital of Brazil, while smoking a cigarette, he puffed out some smoke into the air and said, God, that's for you. He was age 31 then when he did that. And he puffed out the smoke and not even a few weeks later, at age 32, he died of an unknown lung cancer in his body in a horrible manner. And how about the man who built the Titanic? Oh my God. The man who built the Titanic, the captain of the ship, said, not even God can sink this ship. And we all know what happened to the Titanic. Or here's one that really touches my heart. The man of God, Billy Graham, was once sitting at a show that was being given by Marilyn Monroe. And you would think that he may have been sitting at that show so that he could be entertained by her, but he had an urging of God. He felt a need to go and minister to Marilyn Monroe. And after the show, he went to her dressing room and said, the Lord told me to come and preach the gospel to you. And he poured out his heart to her, telling, us about, telling her about how much Jesus the Christ loved her. He poured out his heart to her. And at the end of her conversation, him praying that she would accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. They would pray the prayer of salvation. Instead, she looked at him with a harsh look. And she told him, she said, I don't need your Jesus. I don't need your Jesus. And this was a week before they found her dead of a drug overdose. And then the man, Bon Scott, <laughs> Bon Scott was the lead singer and instruments for a group that was called ACDC. And he had a song that he was the lead singer of, and he, and he sang these words. He said, don't stop me. I'm going all the way down, all the way down the highway to hell. This was 1979 when that song was released. Early in the year of 1980, February to be exact, Bon Scott was found dead. Not dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound, not dead of someone killing him, but he was found dead as he choked to death in his own vomit. I'm telling these stories for a reason. Also in the country of Brazil, again, let's go back to Brazil. A group of friends have, were going out to get drunk, and this young lady, her mother told her, uh, beloved, Go with God. Please go with God. Do with God. And she told her mother, she said, Mama, if he can't fit in the trunk, then he can't go with us. Because this car is filled with everybody who's going to go and enjoy themselves, who's going to enjoy life, as young people call themselves doing. He said that, she said that God cannot go unless he can fit in the trunk. So she went out and she was drinking and having herself a herself and her friends a good time and in the midst of this her mother was praying and then her mother received a phone call saying there had been a terrible accident a terrible accident so bad that they could not even recognize what type of car it was but everybody in the car had lost their lives everybody and they said the strangest thing was that though they could not recognize the car in the makeup in the passenger compartment, not even the engine compartment, could they recognize the car? The strangest thing was the trunk was intact. The trunk was totally intact. And at that moment, her mother remembered that she had left 
a carton of eggs in the trunk. And they opened the trunk up and guess what? The carton of eggs was not even damaged. It was the only thing that was intact in the entire car. Wow. These are true stories I've told you. These are stories about people who mock God. This is why you've got to be very careful. Don't open your mouth to be so quick to criticize God and the things of God. Don't be so quick to say that God can't do it or God won't do it, my God. And there's a song that says that God not only can he do it, but God will and God will do it in a great way. So don't be quick to mock God. Vision 7, verse 7 and 8 again. We are told that whatever seed we plant is what's going to come up. So we've got to stop planting lemon seeds expecting for an apple tree to come up. We've got to stop planting green seeds and expecting that we would get orange from it. We've got to stop putting inside, squeezing a lemon and expecting that orange juice will come forth from that squeezing We've got to be very careful because today, against the body of Christ, we have many arrogant people, many hateful people, people who plant seeds of arrogance against God. And then when something happens, they want to blame God, but they have to understand that man has a way that he thinks is right. But the end thereof is always death. Man has a way where he thinks that he's doing the will of even God himself. But they're turning, they'll mock God and they end up suffering. We got to be careful because arrogance is the attitude that these people in the previous story had. They had a sense of mistaken superiority. There's no way that the actress, the superstar, the platinum blonde Marilyn Monroe would have thought that she would have been dead in such a short time period. She was in good health. She thought that she would live on for a while. This is why she so arrogantly told Billy Graham, I don't need your Jesus. What she didn't understand and what many don't understand that he's not just my Jesus. He's everyone's Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the only way to make it into the Father. No one can enter into the Father unless they go through Jesus. So he's everyone's Jesus. He may not be your Savior. He may not be your king. He may not be the one who has, who, who has rescued you, but he's provided a way for you to be rescued from your sin. He's provided a way for you to be reconciliated unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So those with a mistaken sense of superiority need to understand that you're treading on dangerous ground when you mock God. You're treading on dangerous ground when you say things about God that are contrary to his word. Right. You're treading on dangerous ground when you abuse the people of God, the men and women of God. You're treading on dangerous ground when you abuse the flock of God. This is what pastors do. You're treading on dangerous ground when you say things that are totally contrary to the word of God. But what a man says, so is a man. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. There are, there's a systematic effect of what God tells us in 2 Timothy 3 and 1. He said, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be more lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unholy, unthankful. Hallelujah. This is the arrogance that we're seeing in today's world. This is the arrogance that we're seeing that's being broadcast across the news media in every way. This is the arrogance that we see in social media. This is the arrogance that even people who call themselves saved, even the saved of God, my God, are arrogant and they are doing things that are contrary to what God wants them to do. Hallelujah. People are mocking God. People are mocking things of God. People are mocking you as a saved person. They're mocking you. Why are you going down there to that church? That God is not doing nothing for you. This is the day and age that we're living in and we have to be very careful. If you love him, you have to love him. Hallelujah. you got to not worry about what it is that people say. You've got to desire him more than you desire anything else in this world. You've got to love him with an everlasting Love. You got to want to seek and be in his presence, in his face. Oh my God, my God. Hallelujah. So great is the arrogance that 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 no one is beyond reverence of being. Right. 
Right. Hallelujah. The arrogance is so great. The, arrogance, the greatness of the arrogance has resulted in this mocking spirit that we have. Hallelujah. Right. There's, there's, there's a, a governor of a state that said that God did not save them. He said that because of his, his ability, because of his common sense, because of what he was able to do, how he was able to marshal resources, uh, he said this is why the state survived the pandemic. Needless to say, and I won't say the name of this governor, but he just resigned because they found him in a compromising situation. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Now, the stories I spoke to you above, even the most unsuspecting person can see the mocking tone of those individuals involved. It is obvious that these people were not say or, or had a sense of respect of God. Or the things of God. They did not have a sense of respect of the great God that we serve. But even so in the church today there are people who mock God. They mock God. Then they try to, to, to pull in all the worldly things that are in the world into the church. If it was vomited out of the church while you're trying to drag that vomit back into the church. They want to pull all of the worldly dances into the church. They want to pull all the worldly things that people are doing into the church. My God, my God. And one thing that they want to pull into the church, and I'm teaching right now, but it's okay. Hallelujah. One thing they want to pull into the church is they want to pull in the dances of the miming and stuff. They want to pull in the mimers of the church. Do you not know that in Greek, mimers were mockers? They were people who mocked other people. And they want to keep the stuff on their face because they didn't want no one to know who they were that was mocking. But they want to pull these things, even these things in the church, and those things that were going on in Greek antiquity, antiquity were things that were mocking the God of all creation. Hallelujah. And when you pull these things into the church, into a member of the body of Christ, you lessen the, lessen the impact that Holy Spirit has in that particular place. Because Holy Spirit is not going to allow himself to be glorified in the presence of the foolishness. Holy Spirit doesn't want you to try to drag this foolishness into the church and try to clean this foolishness up. No, the only foolish thing that he wants you to drag into the church week after week and get cleaned up is you. My God, hallelujah. They try to pull into the heart, the body of God, into the body of Christ, these unholy things where we are the pillow and the ground of the truth. Many people want the truth to be their truth. But when you try to make the truth your truth, what are you doing? You are mocking God. Do not mock God. Hallelujah. These are last days that we're in. And sound doctrine is being traded for a new age religion. A self-serving, a me first theology is being served, changed, served in, hallelujah, for where people's own selfish desires, where they're seeking to make themselves God, literally God, hallelujah. Instead of God shaping them, they're shaping themselves. Hebrews 13 and 9 screams, be not carried away with diverse and strange doctrine. Right. Don't be carried away with things that are contrary to what you have learned. Right. When you've learned to pill in the ground or truth, don't be carried away with foolishness. Yeah. Don't be running around having the seeking and the itching ears trying to find something to satisfy your flesh. Amen. It is your spirit, hallelujah. When your spirit's been fed in a place, you need to be in that place. My God, my God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, my God, my God. It says, be not carried away with strange doctrine. Oh. Hallelujah. It says, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, Amen. not with meat, Amen. which have been profited them nothing that they have been occupied therein. The mocking spirit depends on false doctrine to justify mm -hmm. the false flesh, the fleshly desires of people. Some say, I'll go to church when they do things the way I want them to do things at church. Oh, this is when I'll go to church. When the pastor preaches what I want him to preach, yeah. how I want him to preach it. When the singer sings the songs that I want to hear oh, sing. Oh. When, when, when things go the way I want to, or even when I get the clothes I want to wear to church, this is what when I will go to church. But the word of God clearly says that this is not about you. It is about the spirit of the living God.
God been pleased. We don't come to church to be entertained. We come to church to worship the one true God. We don't come to church to look and see who's wearing what right next to us. To look and see what so and so is saying about such and such. We don't come to the church because the church is not the pillar and the ground of gossip. It's not the pillar and ground of a fashion show. The church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. We come to the church to hear the true word of God. The true living word of God. We don't come to the church for all this other foolishness because if you come for all this other foolishness, guess what you're doing? You're oh mocking God. God. You're mocking God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God, my God, you're Amen. mocking God. Hallelujah. Those people I mentioned are typical people who have cold relationships with God. Relationships that have wax cold. They're wax cold. They're not just cold, but they have wax cold. But in the church, there are those who who mock God. They mock God through mocking a pastor. Come on now. They come after the pastor with everything that they have. Oh, he's not doing what I want him to do. How about is he doing what God wants him to do? You need to pray and seek God for the man or woman of God who's over you. That's what you need to do instead of being so quick to put your mouth on the preacher. Being so quick because the word of God tells us, do not do harm to my prophets and my preachers. Do not. They are mine. I will hold them accountable. It is not your job to try to hold them accountable. Because most times when you're trying to hold them accountable, you're using your own standards. And you got a big old tree inside of your eye trying to pull out a splinter out of theirs. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Church folks will mock God mm -hmm. when we come into the house of the Lord and we show no respect for the service. No respect for the prayer. We come into the house of the Lord and we get on our Instagram, our oh. Facebook. We stay on our Facebook. We stay on our devices. We're texting back and forth, worrying about what we're going to eat later. What we're going. To. So the thing is that because you are in the church, don't mean that you're in the church. Don't mean the church inside of you. Because you are there, present there, but your heart is not there. There's an old song they used to say, uh, uh, my, my body is here with you, but my heart is on the other side of town. And that's the same thing with people in the church. They're saying that they're in the house of the Lord because they're thinking that they are, are making a mark. They're thinking that they are doing certain things. Oh, my God. They're thinking that they're punching their tickets. But they're not punching any tickets. Hallelujah. They're doing what? They're mocking, mocking God. God. They're mocking God. Oh we have God. people in the middle of altar calls be mocking God. I've sit up and watched people in the middle of altar call mocking God, looking back and forth to each other, then looking with a despise and look at the preacher. Oh, stop, Pastor. My God. I've seen them mocking God in the middle of a communion. My God. My. I've seen them mocking God in the middle of Bible studies. My God. My God. When you think that you're doing the church a favor by coming to church, you need to know that the favor is being done is your favor. It's what God is calling you to do. He said to do not suffer, do not, do not abuse, do not, do not let go of the fellowship. We need the fellowship. Right. My God, my God. Amen. When you've been at your lowest point, not knowing how you were going to make it, then you cry out to God and he moves on your behalf. Mm -hmm. But as soon as things get better, mm -hmm. oh, things better now, I don't need them. You're mocking God. You're mocking God. You deny him by not wanting to testify. It says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. You're mocking God by not wanting to testify of his goodness and mercy and kind. You're mocking God by not wanting to tell people what he has done for you because you are ashamed thinking that you are, you are, are, are any worse than anyone else. The thing is that you don't have to worry about who you are. Be more concerned about who God is and tell the story. Let it be known that I was poor. Let it be known that now I'm doing better because of the blessing. Let it be known that I was on my deathbed, on my way out of here. But God said, as he said to Hezekiah, I'll give you new life. I'll add to your year. Let it be known what God has done for you, my God, my God. Don't mock God. Don't mock God. Hallelujah. We've got to be very careful because there's many people in the church who are lukewarm. Oh, come on. They want the benefits of salvation, but not willing to put in the time that it takes to grow. Oh, 
not willing to testify the violation of the great commission which tells you to go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. You're not using the tools that you have been given. You're going through a test because you are to have a testimony. And if you do not testify of your testimony, guess what you're doing? You're mocking God. My God, my God. Hallelujah. How about those who join ministries based upon personalities? They join ministries based because this preacher is so charismatic. This preacher is such and such. This preacher. You need to understand that God made us the way that he wanted us to be. For the purpose that he wants us to be in. And don't be joining the church just because of a personality. You can be all of stuffed up in that place. And you'll be lost in the middle of that place. My God, my God. There's a story. There's a preaching I done one time. I was all lost in the temple. Where people thought that they were saved. Because they came to church. Because because they punched the ticket. They thought that they were saved because they sang a certain way. They thought that they were saved because they dressed a certain way. They thought that they were saved because they gave unto the church. They thought that they were saved, but they had no true relationship with God because they had no true relationship with God. They were here one day to part from me, for I know you not. And when you are going to church doing all those types of things, you are not doing nothing but mocking God. Mocking God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, my God. Man. The question would be, if you join the church because of a personality, what are you going to get? That person has no heaven or hell to send you to. They have no heaven or hell to send you to. Your relationship with them is not valuable. It's your relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. If you come to church based on any person, then guess what you're doing? You're mocking God. You're mocking God. The scripture tells us, it says that, that there are those who will mock God in a way such as uh, uh, those who have a form of godliness. Oh, oh, oh my God. They have a form of godliness, but guess what? They deny the power thereof. Hallelujah. They had a form of godliness before the pandemic came on. My God. They were glorious all in the church. They had the big hat club on the front pew. They were all in the church before the pandemic came. My God, my God. But they're denying the power thereof of God to keep them when the word says that if you speak it then you will have it. If the word says hallelujah that, 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 that death shall not come nigh thy door you need to live on that word my God or not to operate in fear. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. And then there's those circumstantial saints. <laughs> hallelujah. Those circumstantial saints as long as circumstances uh, match what I want it to be. <laughs> those circumstantial saints that say as long as, uh, uh, and this goes back to the pandemic, those circumstantial saints that say as long as the Delta variant is not out there. <laughs> and the devil is playing with your head. He's playing with your mind. My God, my God. He has a new, there's a new virus that's coming out. A new variant of the virus is called a Lambda. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anytime when the devil sees that he has you against the wall and can do something to keep you from worshiping in the house of the living God, he's going to do that. Be it a job, be it a child, be it a relationship, be it an illness or a sickness, he'll do whatever he has to do in order to keep you from coming to the house of the living God. And when you don't come to the house of the living God, that power of Holy Spirit is not being, is not being released in your life and you're more subject to fall and pray to the enemy because you're not fellowshipping the way that you should with the people of God in the house of the living God. And when you do that, you're doing what? You're mocking God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory unto God. See, God, some, the circumstantial saints, they also say, first lady, God knows my heart. <laughs> God knows my heart. And I say to you, yes, he knows it. Because all your actions start in your heart. He judges not to your outside appearance. This is like when he chose David to be king. He said, I don't look on the outside. I look at the heart. We have circumstantial saints who have two different faces. One moment they sound like T.D. Jake and they preach you happy. And not even two or three moments later, not, not even two or three posts later, uh, hallelujah, they cursing like Richard Pryor. Huh? Hallelujah. True saints, though, you're not off the hook. Don't think that you're off the hook. As often we do carry out our roles as defined in Galatians 6 and 1. Uh, for your memory, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one to the spirit of meekness. And the spirit of meekness, considering 
thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So not working toward restoring those who are caught up in sin is a sin. It's a sin, my God, my God. I, I, I'm not talking about those who choose to walk contrary to the will of God. But those who have fallen in unintentional sin, those who are young in the faith, those who are new to the faith, those who are eating, uh, drinking milk and not eating meat, hallelujah, those who are seeking the tickling, ear tickling doctrine, but yet when we as saints don't tell them the truth, when we as saints turn a blind eye to the things of the living God in a position of authority, oh my God, in a position of authority or in a position where they're ministering to other people and yet we know what they're doing in their lives, how they're living their lives and guess what, we are not doing righteous and God is going to hold us accountable and God's going to say at that moment, at that time, hallelujah, you were mocking me, hallelujah, because we need to be a son, choose life. Choose to live a life that, that God is glorified. But some choose to live a life where God is there. They choose to live a contemptuous, fake life. When I was young, the Lord, I didn't understand the story of Acts 16, which is told of the maiden who for days walked behind the apostles, huh? behind Paul and Silas, declaring, hear these men of God. Like most, you would think, why are you stopping them from glorifying God? Mm -hmm. Huh? Right. Like most, you would think, why? They're, they're proclaiming God in this. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it wasn't proclamation of God. It was mockery. Mm -hmm. It was mockery. Mm -hmm. It was seeking a place in them. See, men and women of God, be very careful. Be careful who tries to seek a place in you. Mm -hmm. Because when they're trying to seek a place in you, many times they're trying to seek footing. They're trying to seek a place they can begin pulling the nails out of your relationship with God. They're trying to seek a place to destroy the things that you have built up in God. They're trying to seek what it is that makes you tick, what makes you go on. In other words, what they're doing, they're trying to figure out a way where they can tear you down. And when they tear you down, they're mocking God. They're mocking God. Mockeries of the devil. And mockery is not an honor. Mockery may show respect from fear, but not honor right. from love. Right. Mockery shows one true relationship with the Lord. People who are quick to mock others are uncertain of who they are in Christ. That's right. Oh my God. My, I had to grow in that area. I had to grow. I had to grow where I couldn't be just criticizing churches. I had to grow in that area. I had to know who I was in God. Right. And once I learned who I was in God, I learned that I cannot go out there putting my mouth on things about people. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once you know who you are in Christ, once you are certain of who you are in Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah, you cannot have that spirit of envy working with you. You cannot have that jealousy working with you because that's a stronghold that controls even death. That's right. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Well, how do you discern when the spirit of mockery is operating? Come on, tell us. You do it by fiercely guarding your relationship with God. That's it. The Lord will tell you when there's mockery going on. Oh, my right. God, my That's God. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As, as many know, I guard my relationship with God like no other. I, 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 I guard my relationship. I'm constantly trying to examine, uh, seeking God. Lord, show me. Lord, reveal to me. Lord, purge me. Lord, look, use your searchlight to go on the inside of me to ensure that I'm living my life the way that I should be living. Lord, don't let me go out there and do something that's going to cause you shame, my God, my God. But Lord, let me live my life in such a way where they do not look at me. They look at the Jesus that I'm lifting up. They're looking at the cross. They're looking at the foot of the cross. And they're looking at the place that they should be in God. Oh, Lord, let it not be about me. Hide me me behind the cross, oh God. Hide me behind the cross, my God. Hide me, oh God, so that Christ will be glorified. This is what John the Baptist said. They went to John the Baptist with a whole bunch of mess. They went to John the Baptist seeking to get John the Baptist to say something contrary to the will of God. Oh, my little old shit. They went to John the Baptist trying to get him to say something that would cause Christ not to be glorified. Come on now. 
John the Baptist knew who he was and knew for certain who Christ was this time. And John the Baptist said, he said it like this. He said, look, it is time for me to recede. I fall into the background. Hallelujah. I fall. I surrender my place so that he will be glorified. Oh, oh, in other words, so that he will be lifted up. I did not come here to be lifted up. If I came here to be lifted up, I wouldn't have been out there in the desert, sitting by a almost dry river, eating bugs and wearing rags. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. You need to value your relationship in such a way as you you carry a spiritual club. You got to guard your ear gates. You got to guard your mind gate. Don't let nothing sit in your mind for too long, my God. You got to guard your eye gate, huh? Don't let your eyes linger in on something too long. You got to guard your touch, your feel. You got to guard your feet gate so you don't walk into the things that you should not walk. You got to be totally sold out. Hallelujah. When you're totally sold out, you know what spirit is operating around you, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, as I was rereading these scriptures, for the sermon the Lord brought to my attention, uh -huh. the purposes of verse 9 and 10, and I'm going to read it to you, because this verse is really mean something. A lot of people stop at 7 and 8, oh my God. But verses 9 and 10, verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Verse 10 says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. Hallelujah. First of all, don't be weary. Don't grow tired of doing what's right. Don't grow tired. Do what's right even when it don't feel good. Do what's right even if it's going to hurt your position. Do what's right regardless, my God, my God. And don't be weary in well-doing because in due season, you need to know it is your due season, my God. It is time for you to begin to reap the harvest that God has set forth. It is time for you to begin to be blessed of the things of God. It is time for you to reap because it is your due season. Oh, and verse 10 said, and, and we have therefore opportunity. When we have the opportunity, uh, hallelujah, we need to seek the opportunity, seek the chance to do right by other people. Right. We need to seek the chance. Hallelujah. The word says that it says this because we need to understand. It says, let us do good unto all men. It didn't just say the people in the household of faith. Let us do good unto all men. And then it says, especially those who are in the household of faith. See, if we don't do good to even those who do us wrong, then how do they know about the love of Christ? What will make them question? Why is it that you're treating this way and you have an opportunity to give your testimony? What will make them question that? My God, my God. Hallelujah. Unless you treat them right. But if you treat them like the world treat them, then they're going to go on about their business. That's what I expected. You treat me just like I expected you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And with those two verses, I begin to close the sermon today. Come on. Hallelujah. Many mock God because our faith in him, believe it or not. We mock him because we profess to have faith in him. But we don't, when we don't do the things that our faith said we should do, Come on. then we're mocking God. We're mocking him. Amen. Because when 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 they when we as Christians mock our endeavors to glorify God, because when, let me say it this way: when others mock us, when we're living the saved life, when we're living the saved life, when we're living the saved life, and we're doing the things that saved people ought to do, and when others mock us, don't take it personal. We need to be like like God told Samuel: Oh, they didn't reject you; they're rejecting me. Uh -huh. So when they're mocking you, they're really mocking. God. Right. They're mocking God. Hallelujah. They're mocking God. Hallelujah. And when they mock your endeavors to do right, they're mocking God. Hallelujah. In 2 right. Peter 3, it says, Knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. My God. Scoffers. They'll scrape you and scar you up. Scoffers. Walking after their own flesh. Walking after their own lust. Scoffers. Mean that they are doubting and they're not afraid to doubt it in your face. They're not afraid to verbalize their doubt. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. Verse 4, in saying, where is the promise of his coming? <laughs> well, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation, not realizing that dispensations and dispensations are coming. Right. 
dispensations have come. Not seeing the change that's going on in the world. Not seeing prophecy being fulfilled. And because they're not seeing prophecy being fulfilled, they have the audacity to mock our God. Beloved, welcome to the last days. There was a time when those in the circles of a Christian, because Christians have friends that are unsaved as well, those within that circle of the Christian respect the Christian. They may go and do whatever they want to, but while they were around that person, they were very careful of how they conducted themselves. Exactly. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But now the same people are attacking their Christian friends. Right. Uh, they're attacking their Christian friends. Hallelujah. They're asking the question, where is your God? Oh, during the time of this pandemic, where is your God? Where is your hill? Where is your deliverance? They're asking these questions of those who normally they would not dare have the audacity to treat in such a way. Hallelujah. And it is our place, though, still to treat them right. right. It's still our place to love them in spite of how they're acting. Amen. It is Amen. still our place to continue to lift up what the name of Jesus. It is still our place to continue to be kind to those who abuse and use us. It's still right. our place. Verse 10 does not give us the release, does not give us relief to mistreat those who mistreat us. Nope. It does not give us that relief. In truth, we are to pray for those who despitefully use us. But I see a lot of Christians praying, saying, God, get them. They have the God, get them spirit. I'm going to pray for you, not meaning in a way that it should be used. In other words, that's witchcraft. My God, that is witchcraft. That's abusing the things that God has given you. I'm going to pray for you. No, that is not what God is saying. God is saying, pray in love, not in uh, less, not in a way that mocks me. Pray that they would be delivered. This is why the Lord said, vengeance is mine. Because the Lord seeks in vengeance to restore. Uh, hallelujah. Whereas we seek in vengeance to destroy. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So verse 10 does not give us the, 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 the ability to mistreat scoffers because they're mistreating us. It says, pray for them. Pray for them. Because when we pray for them, it allows God to work on their hearts. Hallelujah. But when we react in our own flesh, what does it do? It drives them further away from the opportunity of being in God. Oh, hallelujah. It drives them further away from the truth of the word of God and drives them to a closer relationship with possible damnation. Hallelujah. And this is where we refer back to Galatians 6 again. Okay. 6 and 9. All right. Don't be weary in your well-doing because in due season, God will wipe away every tear. In due season, in due season, God will make everything beautiful. In due season, he will make you the head and not the tail. In due season, heartache will become heart joy. In due season, God is going to make everything beautiful in his due season. Do not mock God and not provide him reasonable service either. What's reasonable service? Now, we have many types of services in the church. We have choir days. We have usher days. We have deacon days, pastor's birthday, pastor's anniversary, first lady's birthday, first lady anniversary, first family day. We, we have all of these things. But what we don't have is reasonable service. We don't have reasonable service unto the Lord. Because when you have reasonable service, you allow God to be glorified in thyself. When you have reasonable service, you don't mock God. When you have reasonable service, let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we glorify you for your word today. We ask, Lord God, that you would touch, that you would be a fence all around and about, oh God. Lord God, let your word not fall on fallow ground, but let it fall on soil that has been prepared, O oh God, through ministry, through the spoken word. Let it fall on soil, Lord God, that has faith, O oh God, because your word says clearly, O oh God, hallelujah. How are they going to know unless they are given faith? And how are they going to have faith unless, O oh God, someone preaches the word to them? 
Let the ground be absorbing, O oh God, of your word, so that proper seed will come up, so that souls will know not to mock you in your word, that souls will grow in you. We give you worship, hallelujah. We give you praise, O oh God. Glory unto your name. It's in the matchless name of your, our Lord, your Son, Jesus the Christ. We pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. Amen. I pray that the word touch you in a deep spot in your heart on today. Hallelujah. That you know that it is to your detriment to mock God. Hallelujah. We love this offering time. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to have offering here in a few moments in the sanctuary. But before we have offering in the sanctuary, amen. First and foremost, I'd like to thank those who have been so faithful in your giving, diligent in your giving. Amen. I bless God for your diligence in your giving. And I'm praying that, hallelujah, that you would be, continue to be a giver and that the Lord will bless you because God is not mocked. Hallelujah. If you sow seed in good ground, then God's going to make sure good fruit come up for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for your giving. Amen. And the grace to give. Now I want to also talk to those, hallelujah, hallelujah, who want to be a blessing to the ministry. Hallelujah. And you can be a blessing to this ministry by going to your Android or your Apple store and download either Giveify or the uh, Cash app. Giveify a cash app. If you're going to be a blessing by going to through the Giveify app, then look for the picture of our lovely wife, Pastor Tina Schaefer, amen, and be a blessing to us in that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Or if you want to be a blessing alternatively by using the PayPal or the, the uh, pay, the cash app rather, amen, the cash app, then you can be a blessing to us by using our sign, which is dollar sign interceding CC. Dollar sign, intercede in CC. Thank you for your giving, amen. Before we go, amen, I'm going to say one more thing, amen. That is, the rapture is coming. You need to know that the rapture is coming. You need to be prepared to go back home with Christ. But if for some reason you have failed and you know the rapture has occurred and you're sitting here stewing in what's going on in the world, amen. They're trying to explain the disappearance of millions of people, a number to which no man can number. They're trying to explain it by scientific pack or whatever, amen, amen. Then let's you know <clears throat> that God's grace is still with you. Through his grace, he's allowed you to see this video. You can still accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's as simple as, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. And begin to walk in a way that he is glorified. God, if you get saved, God is going to ensure that someone is sent to bring you a word. He's going to ensure that someone is sent to bring you a word. Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. And beloved, this is my prayer for you that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior as soon as you can and don't put it off stop putting it off tomorrow's not promised young people are dying everywhere tomorrow's not promised and once you do accept jesus as your lord and savior the enemy will begin to harass you even more he may even kill you no he will kill you because he'll want you to accept the mark of the beast and know this you have to knowingly know what it is that you accept and they cannot slip the mark of the beast in on you. Stop that foolishness. Hallelujah. And when you fail to accept the mark of the beast, the enemy will take your life, your fleshly life, your earthly life, your, your physical life will be over, but your eternal life will begin anew. And you'll be in the presence of the Most High God. And he'll say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, Father. We thank you for this day. We give you glory and praise for those who are listening in, oh Father, and even those who may listen in at a later date. Father God, open their eyes, their understanding to your word on today, oh God, and your word in general, so that they will know that you are a loving and kind God, and you deserve our worship. You don't deserve to be mocked. Hallelujah. Now we give you reverence and praise and honor right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you, beloved. One more thing. Listen in to our series that's entitled Faith Under Fire. We're doing the last of the series, amen, Faith Under Fire. Uh, Peter's final exhortation is going forward. Stay tuned and go and watch it from the beginning all the way to the end. It is very powerful and anointed, amen. It's a team teaching effort by myself and First Lady, amen, amen. God bless you. Love you with the love of Christ. I'll see you soon. I pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.